So what we're going to be talking about this evening is we're going to be talking about meaningful activities and what what do we actually mean by meaningful activities? What 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 might we be talking about? And the reason we're doing this and why we're having this is we, we know, or all of us in the space will know, that dementia is a progressive brain disorder. It causes memory loss, cognitive decline. It's a serious condition and, and it can have a very significant impact on, on people's lives. Now, the other thing that we, we may or may not know is that meaningful activities can actually not can help in so many ways. They can help in terms of improving someone's quality of life, reducing the risk of potential complications, slowing down the progression of someone's dementia even perhaps. So this is a conversation where we're really delighted to have with you to, to really explore what this means, what we're talking about and, and try to kind of think with you about what what you might be able to do going forward. I'm delighted that I've got some fantastic guest speakers this evening joining me. So I'm going to ask them to to quickly come up and tell us a little bit about who they are. Um, and and I, this is the part where I hold my breath because I hope that their microphones work and they can indeed do that. So I'm going to invite Natalie, if you could just um, unmute yourself. Natalie is joining us from Napa and hopefully she'll be able to tell us a little bit about herself and, and Napa if she unmutes. Hello, Vic. Ah, yes, right, breathe one. I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, thank God it's working. Yeah. Okay, so um, for the listeners, my name is Natalie Ravenscroft. I am the Service De- Development Manager for the National Activity Providers Association, NAPA. Fantastic. How long have you been at NAPA, Natalie? Um, I've been at NAPA for the last two years. Um, prior to that, I was an activity provider. Um, but my main responsibilities here are supporting our members. Um, so we support uh, care services, activity providers, working in a range of care services from older care services, to community, hospitals, rehabilitation. And I also support um, the activity support service here at NAPA. Um, work closely with Hilary Woodhead, our executive director on projects and research and learning. Um, so, yeah, we, we do a lot here at NAPA. Fantastic. Oh, well, I'm delighted that you, you've joined us because absolutely, clearly, you're the, you're the people to talk to when we talk about activity providing and activities that are meaningful. So thank you so much um, for all the work you do and also for joining us this evening. Um, thank Jude, you. Jude, hopefully you can also speak. Are you able to unmute and... Tell us a little bit about who you are, Jude. I am, um, I've just turned 60 and mm-hmm. um, I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, um, I think it was about three years ago. Um, and I've done all sorts of um, uh, research and stuff like that up at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um and um, basically filling my days. I mean, obviously, there's a there's a, a huge um, in the beginning. It's it's very difficult and lots of kind of um, what's the word Morn, mo- mourning, I suppose, for mm. for 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 for, um, um, for my last life. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but I, I'm kind of I've had such great support actually um from from dementia uk um so that that has been extraordinary and continues to be actually uh, i wouldn't i don't know what i would have done without them actually oh gosh thank you you've just uh, and that you know what you've just made me all emotional to say that so yeah it is it's it's just one of you know I'm, i'm so grateful to you jude for everything you do actually to to talk to people about our work as a charity, what we do, yeah. and and all, and actually doing things like joining this this evening and, and having this live conversation because yeah. you know we 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 wouldn't ever want to do things without having people living with dementia included in as part of our work. So um, I'm I'm just beyond delighted mm-hmm. that you you're able to do this and join us on Twitter live having this conversation, which I know you didn't even know what Twitter <laughs> was. We didn't. 
<laughs> well, I mean, I've you know, I've seen Twitter, but I've never understood it. Yeah. Well, so. you're here now and in a live space. <laughs> now I'm on it. Yeah, you're, you're on it, and you're you're doing amazing. So, so yeah. thank you so much, um, both of you, for for everything. And it's always a, a nice moment now because I know that both of my guests this evening can speak, which is is tremendously um, a, a much of a relief when when you're doing this kind of thing. And so I'm, I'm really pleased. I'm going to bring us to our conversation this evening. So what we're here to talk about is meaningful activities. And I thought, actually, what might be interesting is just to start with a little bit of a conversation. Like, what do we actually mean um, when we talk about meaningful activities? And and this is something that, you know, I'd like both of you to tell me, what, what do you think? What What does it mean when someone says to you meaningful activities? Do you want to go first, Jude? Uh, I might yeah. as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> meaningful. Um, um, I guess it, for me, something that stirs my soul and 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 um, lets me be the bits of. I've had for you know the last sixty years, mm -hmm. and uh, and use that. Mm -hmm. So so I've swam all my life, and 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 um, and I go to choir, and you know, so I kind of do things that um, I certainly do things th that are with other people. And in terms um, of the swimming that you do, Jude, yeah, I yeah. I know this because. I, you know, I, I, I'm lucky enough to have helped um, in terms of your story and the work that you've done. But you, uh -huh. you do cold water swimming, don't you? I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and it's been... Which is one of those things that I can tell you, I've sat and loved the idea of doing something. Like that. Um, <laughs> but for me, I don't know if that would ever class as being a meaningful activity for me. It might do one day. For me, it might be a form of torture. <laughs> once, once, once you get in, once you get used to it. <laughs> um, if I don't go, if I don't go about at least three or four times a week it feels odd <laughs> what, what is it about the cold water swimming do you think that makes it meaningful um, for you well being in the water is is it, it there's something about the flowing of the river and being part of it mm -hmm. you know if, if, it, if, if I'm on the beach then the waves the energy of the waves give me that kind of energy um i don't know it's just kind of it, it is very um what's the word um 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 sorry <laughs> it's, it's fine Take uh it. you know from right from people have been in water f since since you know the world happened mm -hmm. um yeah. and and i think there's something very familiar and I, do you know what I think? I was thinking about this as well. And when you were talking, I'm thinking, I su suppose when you're in the car, I'm trying to imagine if I was in that situation, which mm. yeah, and I'd imagine you're concentrating on how cold you are and the, you know, that initial shock and, and swimming. You know, you probably don't have the time as well to think about some of the other things that you might think about. You're very focused on what you're doing, I would imagine, yeah. um, it, which must be quite um cathartic in a way it is it is i mean yeah. it is and i'm sure i mean there are it's all over now everybody's doing it but it it, it is that thing of immersing in something yeah. that is um i don't know it's just yeah it, it's extraordinary it's part of who we are and where we've come from mm -hmm. and you know all sorts of things and i go with a um a group who we've been going for ages and and i mean that's you know we've all ho held each other mm. for one way one reason or another you know um yeah we all look mm. after each other and okay. we're we're bound by the the river or the yeah. sea you know it's yeah. it's Thank goodness. I, I, yeah. I can completely and utterly imagine it must. Yeah, I can, I, it's it's one of those things that's on my list to try eventually. Yeah. 
it's but it's interesting isn't it when you think about meaningful activities because something as I say that's clearly very meaningful and significant to mm-hmm. you uh-huh. uh, as I say to me it would probably feel a bit like some kind of form of torture but um <laughs> so I guess that but that's the point isn't it it's something yeah. that's meaningful um Natalie what would what would you say to that what does it mean to you when we talk about meaningful activities how would you define it I think you just summed it up pretty perfectly really um for, from from Napa's perspective you know our vision is that everyone that's living um, or receiving some form of care or support has opportunities, you know, to, to have situations that are meaningful to them and gives them connection. Um, and I think Jude's just summed up all of that in, in her swimming, in her wild swimming. You know, she, she's there, she's present, she's physical, she's involved socially. Um, it gives her a sense of purpose. Um, and it's a pursuit which is individual to her, as you just said, Vic. You know, it's it's not everyone's cup of tea swimming, um, but meaningful activities is is about what what meets the individual's needs. Um, and we all have different needs. You know, we we have group sessions and we go to group for pursuits and events, but it it's what is meaningful to to you. Mm. And I suppose that's going to change over time for all of us, isn't it? You know, if I kind of think back to, to things that might have been meaningful at certain periods of my life, for all sorts of reasons, that's going to change, isn't it? So, you know, and it might change for you too, Jude. One day you might turn around and say, actually, I don't want to do that cold swimming anymore. I'd rather go to a nice warm pool. <laughs> I can't actually imagine that. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it, but you you can imagine it. So it's it's probably important those to still check in and see, and you know, and you can imagine <laughs> thinking just because like you, like you say something is meaningful now, it might be worth just checking in and you know and kind mm-hmm. of seeing are, are you are, is that something that you're still enjoying doing? Is it still meaningful? And and maybe making some adaptations if you needed to. But we can <laughs> we can talk a little bit more about that later, perhaps. I'll I'll, I'll remind myself about that later on. So can I ask you both another question? In terms of meaningful activities and, and the benefits of, of meaningful activities, so we kind of got a bit more of an understanding about what we mean by them. And in my introduction, I talked a little bit about some of the potential benefits. But can I uh, perhaps ask you this question, Natalie, as, and then I'll ask you as well, Jude, but if, if I come to you first, Natalie, yes. what, what, what would you say the benefits are for people? I don't think we've got long enough on here, Vic, but I'm going, to list some, I'm going to list some of them because obviously my years working in the sector and, and being part of an amazing organisation like NAPA, you know, we hear thousands of stories and examples of best practice in terms of, you know, the benefits um, towards being individually led by the individuals that they're supporting. But, you know, there, there's um, a flower approach from Tom Kitwood, which identifies the the psychological and social human needs that we have to have a sense of purpose and a meaning to life. And part of that obviously is social interaction, as I mentioned and Jude mentioned, Mm -hmm. um, and a sense of identity and the benefits of meaningful activities gives us that, you know, things that are meaningful to us, like we said, Jude doing her her swimming um, and the outcomes from that are ones of positive feelings. You know, they reduce that loneliness. In some cases, they can reduce medication. And we've seen evidence where um, it's improved cognitive function um, and it's also reduced the need for supporting equipment. But I think the biggest thing, the biggest benefit, I would say, to meaningful activities is those magical moments. Um, and I've seen many, we, we do see many of them all the time coming through Napa where activity providers and family members have gone above and beyond um, to support individuals to be who they want to be, even from keeping bees right up to um, going down zip wires, you know, connecting with their cultures, re-establishing relationships with their community. So there's, there's lots of benefits there. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello, Vic, are you still there? Sorry. 
Oh, I oh. apologise. Yes, I'm, I'm still here. Sorry. I um, think you was on mute then. I'm sorry. I didn't know if you was talking, but I think you no, was on mute then. Do you know what? You caught me trying to do something on another screen. So, so completely my, my bad at not unmuting myself and get, getting in quickly <laughs> enough. So I, I, what I'd like to do is ask you some more questions in a little bit about some of those activities that you spoke yeah. about because they're, they're amazing and I was trying to share Kitwood's flower in but I, 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 that was obviously a bit too far to try and do all of these things <laughs> but but Jude can I ask you um, to tell us a little bit about what you see the benefits and you talked about some of it about that in, in terms of your swimming but but perhaps in terms of something like going to to choir or another activity what what do you think the benefits of that for, for you individually are? I think um, it's funny because I started going to, to choir um, bef- way before my diagnosis. Um, but And it's the first time in my life I went, you know, that I went to a choir. But um, I think just the, the, socialize, the socialising and the the joining of you know of the song of Mm -hmm. you know um I think that's I think it's really really important to um be involved and 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 take what you can from it so Mm -hmm. you know take the music and take take the people who are making it around you and you know um because it's uplifting um yeah. Mm. And there's something really interesting about music and song and the use of Yeah. Funnily enough, uh, I'm just... sorry. Go on. No, uh, you go I was, on. was going to say um I I worked for a um um for a, a, a short time um volunteering um to with a a, a, a company called um Soundabout. Mm-hmm. And and that's for um, well adults and and young people who are um, have very huge difficulties basically physically mm-hmm. mostly physically and um, um, brain you know um, and um, and that was it that was uh, a sim a similarly gorgeous thing you know because even if you can only hit with a stick one you know beat then it that was something that was going on with you know it was part of the whole mu- music yeah. thing you know um and it was very important just to you know if so if, if you could only tap uh, tap you're still mm. part of the thing it's so uh, it's so true. And what you're what you're saying there is reminds me that when when I'm talking to somebody, I'll always say things like, "It, it doesn't matter if you don't get something perfect. It doesn't matter if." the notes that there's a sketch and I can't remember it so I'm not going to try and quote it but where it's about getting all of the right notes but in the wrong order I think I did just say I'm not going to quote it and <laughs> so, but, but there's there's and, and actually it sort of doesn't matter does it in a way because you're doing something that's that's meaningful it's, and yeah enjoying yourself. and yeah. and immersing in something with 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 other people I think it's um I think I, I think it's really important can I ask you? Did you say that you joined the choir since you were diagnosed? Since your diagnosis, was that a new no, thing? No, no. I I I got my diagnosis. I was already in the choir. Right. I but wasn't sure. Funnily, I funnily enough, though, I'd stopped sort of working. It sort of dribbled out, and mm. you know, I just couldn't sort of. Things were going wrong, basically. Mm. Um, um, but. Uh, no, no, I, I joined the choir before my diagnosis. Right. And when so. and when I got my diagnosis my lovely um 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 choir um woman uh let me off 
um, paying it. So, that is, oh, so, so there are some advantages. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know what though? I, I was thinking music because it, it, I don't know if you understand much about music, and, and Natalie might want to come in and help explain this as well. But we remember music in a different way. We 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 connect with music in a different way, and and we remember it um, with an emotional connection as well as a memory connection, and 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 this a different part of our brain is involved in in remembering um, music and rhythm and song and which is why if you're ever driving in your car or listening to the radio and a song comes on that you might not have heard for many many years actually what can happen is you you suddenly realize you know the lyrics or you remember the tune or or even sometimes that you remember where you were in a pastime when you heard that song and you know you think oh mm-hmm. I remember when I was at so and so's wedding, we danced this, or, or whatever you know, whatever memories you've got associated with that with that piece of music, and and I think that's one of the things that is just so powerful and amazing about that that connection that we have with with music. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Natalie, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, you know, the power of music is just incredible. We see a lot of it. Um, through social media platforms and on TV, and more specifically through our through our members, um, we you know one of the hardest questions I always found asking as an activity provider was you know what is what what, what would be your ideal playlist? Because <laughs> how can we answer what our ideal playlist mm-hmm. is when you know I, I was watching Top of the Pops the other night from the nineties, and there were some fantastic songs on there, and I <laughs> I would start telling my husband. Um, who's a little bit younger than me I was sat telling my husband and I was like oh I remember when this Run DMC song came out and <laughs> I'd play it every night to get ready before I went out with my friends and then it led me on to talking about my community where I lived and mm-hmm. and, and if you'd have asked me to put that on a playlist would I would I, would that song have gone on a playlist <laughs> no. but because the song was played it, it invoked that memory and you're exactly right Vic and and then we've seen music where it's been used um, at the end of um, someone's life journey and <laughs> how that has helped um, with that individual have a good death and the family feel supported and and in some cases where people are not able to speak or communicate verbally any longer, how they can communicate in ways of using sound of their voice. Yeah. So there's lots and lots of situations and um, opportunities to engage with people through the power of music. Yeah, so powerful. I, I love that. I love that that um, example you gave there as well about how you can use music actually at times to to really help enhance someone's care experience. And and I remember mm-hmm. um, many many years ago um, using it to to help a, a gentleman actually in terms of his personal care because he he really didn't want people to help him deliver his personal care and 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 it was a part of his life that was necessary but a part that he he really didn't enjoy and 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 wasn't wasn't it wasn't ever a good part and we he also loved um listening to a certain first Frank Sinatra so I think it's okay to tell you that and (laughs) we what we started doing was putting Frank Sinatra on before we delivered his care to get him in a good mood and singing and happy and and then whilst he was also engaging with that with that care experience having that on and and it totally changed that whole what what was a very negative distressing experience for him became one that that actually he was okay with it wasn't wasn't his favorite thing I don't think to do but you know it was just a part of the day rather than being something that that would cause a lot of distress for that gentleman so um it's always worth thinking about how can I take things that I know are meaningful to to potentially even help in other situations that that you might be in um can I ask, I'm going to take us somewhere else now. So what I'd like to talk a little bit about is how we've all got different hobbies and interests and we've already established that and there's different things that we we like doing. And and one of the things that I'm, I'm constantly talking about, and we've done some, some recent social media about this at Dementia UK as well, is that 
your hobbies and interests can can stay and if you're getting a diagnosis of dementia doesn't mean that you should suddenly stop enjoying those hobbies or interests or or doing these things that you're, you're interested in and and actually as somebody's um cognition um the de- 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 function declines as some as some of dementia progresses it might be necessary to to kind of adapt some of those things, um, you know, to slightly change some of the parameters by which somebody is able to do their social activities or their their, their interests and hobbies. But you know, it's important that they try. You, you try to maintain them and and keep them going. And I was really interested, Natalie, when you were talking about things like zip wires and beekeeping, because these are the kind of things that that we might think actually are a bit risky as well. So can you can you tell us how you were able to support those those people to to do those activities? Yeah, um understanding the individual, understanding what support they need to fulfil, what is meaningful and important to them, and educating other people around you, because you know, most of the time um there can be this perception that as someone progresses on their journey living with with dementia, that um, we kind of have to wrap them up in a cotton wool. And that is so far from from the truth. Um, There will be times where we have to adapt situations, you know. um, We we, um, have ambassadors that are living with dementia and living well with dementia uh, with NAPA, and they will often share their stories, a bit like Judy's doing now, around how they would want to continue doing something but how also their dementia has um, increased their need to do things that they never wanted to pursue Um, and I think when we talk about things like zip wires and beekeeping um, it's really important to understand that we don't want to be risk averse when it comes to supporting people people that move into the care sector or need additional care support have been living in their own homes you know they were cooking the day before they moved in um they they were probably going to the shops by themselves and enabling them to fulfill and continue what is passionate for them what is meaningful for them is such an integral part of of providing positive care um and experiences so yes you know um, we've I've supported someone to go down the zip wire so he wanted to fly like a bird why not um, we encourage things like beekeeping because as long as we've identified what support that individual needs what the risks are but the benefits outweigh them risks um, and the benefits are again going back to Kitwood's flower you know that purpose the identity um, it brings that person comfort um, and it's about skill sharing as well. You know, if you've got bees in, in, your, in your garden um, and people are there, they inevitably want to talk about them and they become interested in it. It's the longevity of that activity, you know, so you'll have someone that might be wanting to be the beekeeper, but you'll have someone that eventually might want to um, paint the bees or paint the flowers that surround the bees or just sit and watch. And that'll lead on to someone wanting to create a poem or feel inspired to do some creative writing. So eventually something as simple as having bees in the garden actually brings a whole community together, Mm -hmm. which is meaningful to them individually. Yeah, it's it's so true. Um, Jude, did you have something you wanted to add there? Um, No, I totally agree with with everything that you've just said. Um, um, Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that, that... I do know somebody who who um, is really struggling, who's had a, a um, diagnosis and doesn't want to go out and doesn't want to, you know, talk to anybody. And, you know, um, and I guess that 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 is. Um, um, it, well, it's just. It, I, I guess you have to have a, 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 um, a bit of mourning before you can. Mm-hmm start coming back think, into yourself a bit do you yeah. know what I mean and I think um, the other thing yeah. to, to think about is that you know when you first get a diagnosis there, there is potential that like you say there's that bit of mourning that you go through or mm. 
or there's that adjustment period where you you might you know sort of be a bit not sure yourself about what you can still do and what you can't do or what you should do or yeah you know and and actually as Natalie said earlier on sometimes people kind of well-meaningly want to kind of wrap somebody up in cotton wool to to protect them as well yeah. so I think yeah. it's it's probably quite quite difficult um you know when you when you first get that diagnosis to to kind of go okay how do I adjust what Mm -hmm. what does this version of me look like and and I I know she she won't mind me sharing this because um I'm good friends with, with Wendy Mitchell and she's talked in the past about how her diagnosis of dementia actually stopped her feeling afraid about things and that mm-hmm. sort of, and suddenly doing things that she would never have done previously because she didn't have the same fear around some of the activities that that she might have, have had in the past so she's done things like wing walking and she's at, in September she's abseiling down the the cheese grater building in London and you know and <laughs> Which is again not wouldn't be my idea of a meaningful activity, <laughs> but you know these are things that she wants to do because they're going to give her a sense of um, you know achievement and satisfaction and pride that she's she's achieved these things. Um, I mean, I would feel those senses of pride as well, but it just not in a million years would I want to do any either of those things. <laughs> but, you know, so I guess it, it, again it goes back to what we were talking about. Uh, you know, being allowing things to be meaningful. And you know and 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 structuring what feels meaningful to you and then perhaps also knowing where your risk lines are so Mm -hmm. where what what are the things that you feel comfortable with and what are the things that you're actually no that's that's my line in the sand I, I don't want to do that I'm I'm going to I'm just going to remind people listening to this if you're listening to the live tonight if you do want to ask us a question p- please um feel free to do so and and put the question in into the chat box so the chat box is down at the bottom where the little um purple arrow is and um, I'm I'm going to ask answer a question that we've already been asked because somebody did did ask us a question earlier already which was a question about why do we think that um, sometimes carers don't actually do more activities with their loved ones and and I think this is a question that you know I, I think sometimes it it comes to fear actually I think sometimes it it perhaps as people are, are sort of scared you know what if they fail what if they get this activity wrong um sometimes if you're caring for somebody you're you're going to feel overwhelmed you might feel that there's a you know you might be working looking after children doing all sorts of other things and and you might feel actually it's kind of i'm just gonna do it myself because it, it, it's a job that needs doing and it's easier so I, I often use an example here and i'll talk about peeling potatoes you might know that actually peeling potatoes with your person with dementia is going to be better for them and give them give everybody a good experience but if you're on a really tight schedule and you're rushing and you're you you, you, i can get it because i've been in this situation myself where you go oh i'm just going to peel potatoes because it's easier and you know they'll get done quicker and they're in the pan and they're, they're boiling away but Actually, it's it's thinking about how you could have provided what might have been a really meaningful activity for somebody if that person enjoyed cooking and baking and being in the kitchen and, and doing things. If it's something that they've never liked and didn't enjoy, probably wouldn't have been a meaningful activity anyway. So it, it's just kind of thinking, thinking that through and, you know, and actually looking for opportunities to provide somebody with that that chance to engage with experiences and and not just sit passively um you know we're, we're people who are alive we want to be able to do things and and live our lives um, as, as well as we can so i, I don't know if um natalie if did you have an, uh, any, anything you'd like to add to that answer yeah and i think you've raised you know some really valid points there vic um Quite often through the support line service, we do have family members contacting us in relation to engagement with their their loved ones and and looking for resources. And we have plenty of them on our website. Um, But one of the one of the key things that always arises um, and there's two parts to this. One is carers that have um, little support, i.e. home care or maybe a little bit of respite throughout the day. And then we have family carers that are visiting loved ones in care settings. 
and the the family members that are, are living with their loved ones um, and have little or no care support um I just tend to be exhausted when they're ringing. Um, you know, they're, they're looking for some ideas to keep someone stimulated 24 hours a day in some cases, and, and they're tired themselves, and we know this. Um, so it's about providing them with short bursts, 10-minute kind of activity ideas that are, you know, for example, um, sorting out the cuddle we draw um, or pulling out, a pile of shoes and and not focusing so much on the end result of that activity but more so passing time and keeping that individual stimulated um and then there's also the other side of it where we've got family carers and and loved ones that are going into care services and are not too sure how to have a meaningful visit mm. um you know they might find themselves sharing the same information again um and they might feel that they've told that person um, on the last visit and they've got nothing new to tell them because it might be the day after. So it's about how we support the family, um, carers and friends and loved ones to be able to have a meaningful visit that is keeping them occupied and engaged at the same time as the individual that's that's um, living with, with dementia. Um, and as I mentioned, I will tell you later, but we do have lots of resources to help. And I think lastly, Vic, it's about joining things like this today that are raising the awareness of how to engage with your loved ones, how to get some tips and ideas. You know, um, we use the word training, but I use that very, very loosely when it comes to family and friends because I don't want to scare anyone off. Mm -hmm. But it is about educating ourselves um, on how we can have them approaches to support our own well-being as well. You know, we can't support people if we're not in a good place as a carer, as a family carer. Yeah. So it's about joining things like this, coming along to free webinars and events and, and just connecting and, and listening to some top tips and some advice. Yeah. It's, it's so true, isn't it? And, you know, so one of the things that you said there that I'd like to just explore a little bit more because we, we get asked this uh, as admiral nurses, we, we often get asked this question is around when I'm visiting my, my, my loved one, whether that's in their own home or, or in, uh, in a care, care environment, knowing sometimes what to say or what to do or, or how to structure that, that visit so that you do have a meaningful visit. And, and it, it can be really hard and you know to, to, to know what you're going to do but actually if you go in knowing that okay I'm going in and I'm going to we're going to do x y or z activity and we're going to have a conversation about it or we're going to get our swimming stuff on and go swimming or we're, we're going to go and tend the bees or, or whatever it is that you, you, you've got there as a plan that that can really can really help you know to, to have that structure so that you're not you're not kind of going in with a bit of a well I'm going in because I, I want to go in and visit but actually not having any kind of real kind of awareness about what you're going to do when you're there um, and and that's really difficult what what tips would you give people around meaningful visits Natalie? First check if they're a NAPA member, if they go into a care service, <laughs> because they should have um, access to the digital platform, which has um, thousands upon thousands of resources and toolkits, um, which you can access, you know, if, if that home is a NAPA member, um, do ask and, and speak to the activity provider. Uh, if they're not, still speak to the activity provider, because the activity providers are the individuals that can help um, help with your visits and, and make them more engaging and meaningful, provide you with resources or equipment, you know, pens, paper, um, maybe images. Mm -hmm. And I would also think about, you know, you know the individual better than anyone. Um, you can do things like um, happy books, you know, where we've got, if someone's interested in animals and they've got lots of, you can get photographs um, of funny-faced animals, which, you know, evokes a conversation. We have lots of resources um one of them being a calendar with something for every single day for you to do with an activity idea and it's you know it's not over ambitious it's very easily laid out it's one page what you need what you do and some top tips and it's got a bit of a conversation starter as well um so the, there is resources there and, it, and it's just about connecting if you're going into a care service with the activity provider mm -hmm. and if you're at home with someone 
get in touch with us through the support line service and I'll tell you more about the support line service later but we'll be more than happy to to discuss and share some some more ideas do you, do you want you can even talk about it now if you want Natalie because let, let people know about that resource that's available and obviously you know the other thing I, I'll say as well is obviously we've got at Dementia UK we've got our helpline so wherever you are if you need to speak to an admiral nurse we can absolutely help with with that as well but in, in terms of activities Nappy, you're the experts so, yeah. you know what what would could you want to share the yeah of course Thanks, Vic. So um, NAPA has a free and confidential support line service. You can email us at supportline at napa-activities.co.uk or you can call the support line for free on 0800 158 5503. We have a monthly online um, support group which is called The RAIN which is Resources Activity Ideas Network. It's free. It's on the third Tuesday of every month at four o'clock. Um, you can book your tickets through the Eventbrite page under NAPA. And you can come and join a group of family, um, activity providers, a real mixed group. Um, and here uh, we have a topic normally every month that the group picks. Uh, the next one is Arts and Care Home, how we can get creative. Um, and we talk about ideas, what is the meaning behind something? It's a really nice support group. And then lastly, um, if you want to join our social media group pages uh, through Facebook and Twitter, um, you will get lots of inspiration and ideas and sign up to the Napa News, of course. Perfect. Some fantastic tips and advice there for people because I I know that that's something that lots of people um you know struggle to know where there's resources that are available that they can access and the fact that yours are there, the you know lots of my free to use that why would you not want to access them so thank you so much for for sharing all of those um excellent resources there. Can I, what I'm going to do for the last, um, we've got about 15 minutes left. These spaces always go so quick. It always amazes me. But I'd like us to try and think together and share some some tips about what, what different activities might look like. And also, I'd like you to help us with this, Jude, in terms of thinking about how you might adapt some of these potentially and perhaps how you've adapted some of the the, the hobbies that, that you have. So... If I start off by thinking about, you know, when we think about meaningful activities, they could kind of go into a few different categories. And one of them might be hobbies and interests. Um, so if we if we think about that, as I was saying earlier on, we, we talked about they're all going to be varied. Um, and, you know, we want people to be able to to keep whatever's relevant to them, but perhaps adapt it. What, what, what sort of hobbies and interests I know we've talked about some of them, but is there any ones that you you might suggest that you, you people might want to think about? Um, now, uh, yes. um, <laughs> I, I went to um, uh, at uh, I think it was just before Christmas or after Christmas. I can't I can't remember when it was. Um, but there's a, a company that go around the country and make music mm -hmm. and they make music with with us so so for instance you know i'm in oxfordshire so all the oxfordshire um uh dementia people mm -hmm. um come along and this fantastic um theater people come along and and we we make our own um songs and the the uh, students are um, in from the university uh, create the the music mm -hmm. um, so and it's a fantastic thing um, and it and it just brings everybody together and um, like you know young youngish people you know in the uh, who are at, at university or mm -hmm. you know um and and then there's us lot, and then there's and then we um, we did it for um, about eight weeks actually, and then mm -hmm. had a concert with um, all the friends. And, and 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 for me, it was it was really um, it was a really bonding experience mm -hmm. because we all 
you know, some of us can sing and some of us can't, and it didn't really didn't matter at, at all. <laughs> but we'd made it. Everything that that we'd done, we would made it together. And Did you, um, you know what I love about that, Jude, is what you were just talking. No, it's actually what what that sounds a bit like as well is that you were. The, that sense of community but actually yeah. that you were you were kind of bonding and learning something new together with an yeah. end result together so you know that's yeah. sort of of a team as well actually you know that yeah. and Altman, yeah absolutely I mean they were brilliant I can't remember the name of the the company but they go around the country I think um but they come every year this is the first time I've done it but um yeah, and it does. It's it's really bonding, and and the the I mean the dementia UK um, setup is brilliant anyway, and you know, um, and the our Oxfordshire one, they you know I can talk to them whenever I need, and yeah. and 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 they create stuff you know for us to do, mm-hmm. um, but um, this was particularly brilliant because we created it with with the young musicians as well we created it all ourselves and then and it was yeah it was incredibly moving and there's something really beautiful as we spoke earlier as well about music but it is mm-hmm. kind of making me think as well about things like dance and art you know sort uh-huh. of the, the writing poetry or you know or, or even putting on some music and dancing or creating a piece of art yeah so, you know you get that sense of achievement at the end and and I guess the other things as well are things like gardening you know planting seeds and watching something grow or you know I, I again I don't do knitting but uh, you know something like that where you see a an end result um you know that must I know you do do knitting don't you (laughs) how do you know did I tell you yeah you did you told me last time but I guess it's that sense of of getting a result at the end isn't it it's actually I've done this yeah Um, you know and and I, I guess I don't know I might be saying does it matter if you drop a few stitches is that the term you'd use in knitting make a few holes I don't know <laughs> mine have always got holes in and I and I can only do I can only do one stitch and I can only do um scarves so <laughs> so there's a lot of people there's a lot of people getting scarves around here <laughs> I love it I love it that's so funny <laughs> yeah I, I think that would be about my, my knitting levels I, I yeah. remember <laughs> um, I used to knit squares for blankets. That I don't okay. Know. Do you remember doing that? that was the thing about. <laughs> no. Uh, um, <laughs> and I guess you know you you've mentioned some some groups and you know day centres or groups or clubs and you know these these people who who volunteer. So I guess it's about if you feel able to joining in with some of those things and and some people aren't like that actually are mm-hmm. they? You know some people. The idea of joining a club or a team or going and doing that would just be something that they would pull away from anyway and say, oh, no, yeah. that's, that's not me. Um, so I guess, it, it, uh, Natalie, did you want to add something there? Yeah, we're just going to say in relation to hobbies, you know, we all, we all, I hope, kind of understand the, the different types of hobbies that are available out there. Um, but one of the best... Um, one of the best conversations I've ever had with an individual was on their own on a one-to-one and them telling me passionately about their interest and love of cars and how she learned to drive and, and what this Morris Minor green, race mm-hmm. green car was about. And, you know, it got me leading on to thinking about, well, OK, how can we take that? Because, um, you know, it's a physical car and um, how we could enable her to, to share her interest because... If someone's got a hobby, it's a passion, isn't it? So, you know, it's something that they will know a lot about. And again, as as humans, we're naturally inquisitive. So we want to we want to hear about um, I don't know, bonsai trees or mm. Morris Minor cars and or like Jude just said, you know, her knitting and, and it it then led, led on to a conversation that you had about learning with squares. So I think hobbies sometimes don't have to be taken in the literal context of doing a hobby you could also have an individual who might want to 
sharing a group session or on a one-to-one every time a new face comes in might want to tell you about their hobby and you know you provide some information whether that's images or literature for anyone that's hearing about that um to, to be engaged actively um and, and take an interest and we do have um each month in the calendar the free um activity calendar we do have a section on how to connect with your community because it's mm-hmm. now connected community and, and one of them sections is on hobbies and how to connect with your internal so your staffing teams your families your friends and the individuals you support in terms of hobbies and how to connect with the wider community. So just a bit of food for thought there. Don't take mm-hmm. it as in literal physically having to do a hobby. Think about the, the wider picture um, and just someone talking and conversating about it. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, that was that was beautiful points made really well there, Natalie, because there's there's so much about actually, you know, getting out into society as well, you know, joining in with things, um, you know, and, and the other thing that I was thinking as well is that chance to be an expert. Um, you know, and I, I've seen people, you know, really kind of come into their own. We all like doing it, don't we? We like talking about things that are interesting to us. And, and you know, if you can give somebody that opportunity to to be an expert and teaching somebody else in that. I, I, I worked with um, a lady with dementia who'd, who'd been a nurse and she'd been the sister. And she uh, she taught me how to do the old fashioned hospital bed corners, um, you know, and I, and I didn't know how to do it. And she was beaming. And, and and going around telling everybody how bad I was at making beds <laughs> you know what a bad nurse I was <laughs> but, oh. but it was a great experience because I learned something new she was able to you know to kind of go back to that place where she she did have to teach these very junior nurses yeah. how to do these things I had that in the early days Vic it was yeah. um even right in my early right I mean you know, I've been in care a long time but right in the early days of this is the correct way you know and, and yeah. they still used to wear hats on the heads and belts on the waist so yep yep and being told that I looked like a scruff because I'd got my hair tied <laughs> down by her when they used to get so you know but, but it, it actually is, is getting somebody to to kind of feel that sense of purpose and productivity yeah. and, and meaning and actually also having fun while doing it because we can't forget fun we can't have a conversation about meaningful activities and not talk about the fact that ideally the the other reason you're doing it is because you want someone to enjoy themselves you want them to have a nice time a nice experience and actually for you to have that shared experience um you know when the lady i'm talking about we used to have hoots we used to be in stitches and you know and we we did what we needed to do but we would also have great fun and and she used to help me loads in terms of what needed doing so you know it's actually just just providing those opportunities um we're coming right up to the end as we we always do and i want to give you all a, a bit of an opportunity to just share some some final thoughts around this um you know we, we've talked a lot about what does it mean what do meaningful activities mean how varied they are some ideas about what different hobbies might include and and some of the different things that you might do and and some of the benefits of doing that but what 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 would you like people to to have as a takeaway um Jude should I go to you first in in terms of people listening today what do you want them to take away from this space um uh I I would say um grieve and um and then get on with it <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but but don't don't forget to grieve before you get on with it mm. um um and and um yeah and and just live as much as you can you know and yeah it's, it's do stuff do it's stuff fun. I love the get on with it attitude, though, because that's all any of us can do anyway, isn't it? <laughs> you have to just, yeah, yeah. To just get on with it. But um, I, I, I love that because it's 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 so important. Uh, and it's it's also just very quickly, it's also um, um, given it's actually given me a lot, you know, having this diagnosis um, mm-hmm. because I've met 
extraordinary people and um yeah and it's it's kind of part of it's it's all part of the journey yeah and I think actually what you've said there is also super important I mean everything that you've said throughout the space has been super important but but that sense that you know it's part of the journey it, it you know the, the the idea that a diagnosis could have given you a lot is kind of like you know you kind of go oh but actually you're so right you carry on living you just it's just a change it's just something that's that's different um yeah. and you know you you carry on with it and it becomes part of your story you know who you are yeah. and, and what you're dealing with uh, thank you. Um, Natalie, what would you like to leave people with? I think don't be afraid <clears throat> to adapt and support. Um, you know, don't don't fear um, the unknown. I think quite often we, we can easily, like you said before, Vic, you know, take over. <clears throat> pardon me. You can take over in terms of... of completing a task um, or doing something quicker but think about the way you can adapt to support an individual mm. and if you're an activity provider listening uh, to, to today's space think about how you can get the individuals and their families and friends more engaged and involved in leading sessions or um, providing them with the resources to have a meaningful experience together outside of a group activity perfect thank you so much some excellent final points there and you know i guess for me i would just say i'm going to end on having fun because you know that's that's the thing is checking in is this fun is this something we're enjoying is this adding value to to someone's day um you know or or is it is it making something more pleasurable for somebody, you know, um, if you think about the example I shared earlier and, and, you know, kind of structuring things so that you, you can find that. And I, I remember talking to people about, you know, finding the time to dance and saying, oh, well, we never have time to dance, but actually putting some music on, you have a dance, you're suddenly smiling and laughing and you, you're having a good positive moment. So, so find the time if possible to, to sneak in those moments, to have those connections mm -hmm. and do something meaningful and so it might just make the difference to your day and also the the person you're, you're caring for's day or so it's it's worth it's worth um digging digging into that that space so we've shared some um resources at the end of this we, we'll try and share them in tweets as well so that you you've got links to those resources perhaps natalie you could you could look at doing that when when we because the space once closed you can listen again um, and, and we can make sure that people can access those those resources that are available. Um, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's conversation, um, people listening and also my speakers. It's it's been fantastic. Um, but they're always they they go so quick and they're they're always such such great conversations. So I, I thank you both for for joining us this evening and 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 for your time in 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 doing so because it's 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 been you know really great and we couldn't do this without you um there's also mike's just shared about the purple angel charity so they provide um free mp3 players which thanks mike for for popping that into the chat because they're they're fantastic of the purple angel and they will provide these resources free to people so um, we'll, we'll try and share the link there as well if, if people want to know more about that resource um it's a fantastic resource and we, we know the difference music makes so all that's left for me to do is to say thank you um next month we're going to be talking about delirium and, and dementia and and actually what how to spot signs are how to spot and what to do my neighbour has just started trimming a hedge, so I apologise for making <laughs> lots of noise in the background. Um, but luckily, we're just at the end. So thank you, everybody, for, for joining us this evening. Thank you to my speakers. Thank you. Um, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. And I will just go on mute and then very shortly end the space. But thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.